गेलुपे ऊपरीगा पट्टू तले प्राण या आजे में गम्यंगा पोराडे योधुड़ की विजय मंस चाफुबल प्रश्न लो मरिंता फायर सरदार लो मरिंता सेठा है मी कौसम मरिंता रमजुगा दब्बा की थिंकिंग मारी पोवाला मी कौसम मरिंता रमजुगा अब तू देख लेगा बच्चन साहब का खेल डाउनलोड आहाना आकर्षणीय में न चीर लो अब पूरा पर्चे धर लो अंदर की नचना अंदर रूम में चिन्ह शो मदर लक्की महिला बोल रहे थे एक्साइटमेंट वंडरफुल विनिंग मोमेंट्स Watch us live only on TV Asia Telugu. Ni andari ki third anniversary swaga. गेलुपे ऊपरीगा, पट्टू तले प्राणिया, आजे में गम्यंगा पोराडे योधुड़ की, विजय मंस चाफुबल। प्रश्न लो मरिंता फायर, सरदार लो मरिंता सेठा है, मी कौसम, मरिंता रमजुगा। दब्बा की थिंकिंग मारी पोवाला। मी कौसम, मरिंता रमजुगा। अब तू देख लेगा बच्चन साहब का खेल डाउनलोड आहाना आकर्षणीय में न चीर लो अब पूरा पर्चे धर लो अंदर की नचना अंदर रूम में चिन्ह शो मदर लक्की महिला बोल रहे थे एक्साइटमेंट वंडरफुल विनिंग मोमेंट्स मन लकी मह
Another fabulous show of our talk show with experts. Manato Narmana immigration expert Rahul Reddy Garu. Rahul Garu, thank you so much, Andy, for being on the show today. Thanks for inviting me, Garu. Thank you, sir. This program has been supported by Movers.com and AHA OTT platform. Please call our expert on 1833 The number again is 1833 8872. Watch us on Yap TV, Facebook, YouTube, Sling TV, World BB TV, and Dish Network. All right, guys. I, I know I've missed you guys for the last couple of weeks, but I am excited to be back. So coming to the topic for today, working remotely from USA and from India, uh, what are some of the legal considerations for uh, US visa holders and Iraq Garu? So let's let's talk about you know both both scenarios. Uh, tell us about. Uh, first, let me, first let me speak about working in USA, especially okay. people who are on H one B though. Mm -hmm. um, it's perfectly allowed for you to work remotely. You work you can work from home. But one okay. thing that you need to make sure is that let's say your job is in Arizona and you have an LCA from Arizona and now all of a sudden you move to Texas to Dallas okay and you're working remotely in Arizona uh, let's say in Phoenix Arizona you have a, you have your company and you're working remotely in Phoenix Arizona now you move to Dallas before moving to Dallas you have to file an LCA you have to file an amendment before you move to Dallas this okay. is the most common mistake that we see in Itegaru. Okay. That, uh, that, uh, that this is the most common mistake that we see is that they don't, they don't have an amendment done. They don't have anything done and they move and they get into big trouble because of that. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, people will say, no, I'm working remotely. I'm working from my apartment. Why do you have to inform the immigration? No. What we consider is that wherever you're sitting, where your seat is, where you're sitting in front of a computer, that's a jurisdiction you must have been allowed to work. Under the matter of Simio Solutions, if you move a location though, which is within, not within the MSA, which is within, not in the city limits, and let's say not within 40 miles, then you have to file an amendment. That is a must. Uh, the second aspect that we see is that, uh, uh, especially for the, uh, people who want to work from India, people ask this question, is that, can I work from India? Well, you are an Indian citizen. If you're an Indian citizen, if you want to work in India, none of the immigration rules are applicable for you. Right. So, uh, you know, for the, for the people who are here on an H1 and working remotely, so you, you said they have to file this LCA, right? For mm -hmm. to let them know that they are ah, in, not, uh -huh. I'm sorry. So uh, yeah. my question is, um, is that what are some of the ramifications if they don't do that? And, you know, what, what is sort, sort of the first order of priority? Oh, what will happen is that if they don't do it, Nitya Garu, um, uh, is that they will have to then leave the country. And then they have to go to India, get the stamping and come back. Because once the USCIS finds that you violated the status, they will deny your extension of H-1B. They will, or they will deny your transfer of H-1B. Or if they come to know while you are working uh, remotely, uh, when the FTNS comes in, they may revoke your H-1B. Um, oh. So what happens, they will only deny the change of status. The status will be denied. The, so then what happens is that you have to go outside the country to get the stamping and come back because you violated the status in the United States. Okay. In this case, can they do like the Margarita Mexico thing or no? no. Okay, no. Okay. No, they can't do Margarita thing here. They okay. can't go to Mexico and rectify the things though. Um, okay. Because when they get the H1B approval though, Nitya Garu, they don't get it with the I-94. They get it without the I-94 because they violated the status of moving to Dallas without informing, without getting the permission from USCIS. So thus by 
you cannot do the switch of market data mix now you don't have to get the approval from the USCIS. You just need to file the amendment with the USCIS. Okay, got it. So that's that's much simpler, right? You just file it right. and you know. Right. You just file the amendment. You don't have to get the approval. You don't have to do premium processing if you don't want to. Just file the amendment and you're in good. And the filing fees is very less. It's not in thousands of dollars. It's just about $500 or so. So it's not that you have to pay a lot of money for uh, getting an amendment approved or uh, filed. Got it. Uh, so also, sir, uh, for people who are on like concurrent H-1Bs and stuff, are they supposed mm -hmm. to file multiple? Yes, that's a good question, okay. Nitigaru. So if company A is saying that you're working in Phoenix, company B is saying that you're working in Phoenix in apartment. So if you move to Dallas, though, company A has to file an amendment. Company B has to file an amendment. That too, before you move to Dallas. To Dallas, okay. And is this something you can file yourself or does the company have to file this? No, company has to file it. You cannot file it. It, it is a H-1B. Only company can do it. Okay. Now, a lot of people will come to me and say, oh, I informed the company. I changed it in the ADP system. My address, my company didn't do care. The company doesn't observe every little bit thing of those things. That's the reason right. we have TBH. Yeah. So you, when you are moving to Dallas, you need to inform, hey, Lawyer, I'm moving to Dallas. HR, I'm moving to Dallas. I, TBH, Rahul Reddy, and Nityagar, in the conversation, they told me that before I move to Dallas, I need to file an amendment. You need to approach the company because you are the person who is going to get damaged because for, you, for the company, there are thousands of people. You're just one number. So if you, they will tell, okay, you go to India and come back. There may be a lot of interruption for you to, you have to stop working. You have to go outside the country, get the stamping, and then come back. That's going to be a lot of waste of energy. It's just before you move. And a lot of people will say, no, I'm going to move and then file. No. You have to do it before itself. Got it. All right. Thank you, sir. And uh, so about the, you know, working from India, uh, any uh, any legal considerations for U.S. visa holders? Nothing. They come under the, they come under the, they come under the uh, Indian jurisdiction. They don't have to worry anything about working in India. There are some tax implications that you can discuss with the CPA, what need to be done. I've never seen any stricter enforcement on the tax things, so at least not to my knowledge for the people who work remotely from India. Um, nothing. I mean, the people, when I went to Pune and Hinjwade, I see thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. They're working in the nighttime. They're working in USA. They don't have any work permit in USA. They're working here. Mm -hmm. So um, you can if, if you, you can work know. with a you, you can work with a US company without any work authorization directly from India. You don't need any work authorization. All right. But you say if you have an H1 and you've gone back to India and you're working for a US company from there, when you're trying to re-enter the United States, are there any ramifications if you, if you say you're trying to stay there for over six months or something like that? Right. Especially if you have gone for more than four months on a H-1B or L-1 on any other visa and you're continuous to working there in India, I would recommend to, to carry a letter from the HR saying that they still have a job in USA for you in Dallas or whatever place that you are. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that when you have a long absence out of the United States, they don't see that you're working for the same company, let's say Coca-Cola, they don't see that thing. So they see that you have been away for six months. Do you still have a job with Coca-Cola? I doubt it. So at that point of time, carrying a pay steps, probably carrying a letter from Coca-Cola saying that you're still employed with them is going to be good. Don't show it to them. If ever they ask you, hey, it's been like six months. Do you still have a job? Yes, I do still have a job. Here is the letter. Here is the pay steps. Okay. But carry it with you because they get a doubt whether you still have a job or not. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Rahul, sir, any, anything else that you'd like to add at this point before we start taking our no. callers? We, we, can go, we, go to, we can go to Q&A. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, sir. Let's take our first caller for today. Here is the question. Okay, caller with number yeah, ending 9134. 9134, we're ready for you now. Hello? Caller with number ending in 9134. Hello? Sir, please press uh, star six to unmute your line. Hello? Hello? Hello, ma'am? 
Uh, hi, uh, this is uh, Preeti talking. Um, uh, I have a question about my H4 EAD. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, ma'am. So my H4 EAD... Okay, thank you. My H4 EAD is actually expiring on coming Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But I have filed for my extension almost three weeks back. But the mm -hmm. thing is, I haven't received any receipt number yet. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to understand, you know, if I'm still eligible for the automatic extension if I don't get my receipt number by Wednesday. Uh, so you have the H4 extended? Yes, I have my H4 extended till 2026. 2026. So you haven't received the receipt notice. What about the check, though? Was it cashed? Not it. It's been 15 days. If you don't have a check cash, if you don't have a receipt notice, though, you have to stop working until you get either of those things, ma'am. Uh, yes, I okay. understand that, you know, probably I don't, if I don't get the notice, I understand that I won't be able to continue from Thursday. But mm -hmm. my question is, am I still eligible for automatic extension? If you get a receipt notice after Thursday or something like that, you're perfectly all right. For the automatic extension, okay. you need to have two things. One, you must have the H4 extension, which you said you have. The second, you must have properly filed the extension before your EAD expires. You are telling me that your EAD is expiring on Thursday. You have filed an application, whether it's been properly received by the USCA, possibly processed. I don't know about it, though. So if you get a receipt notice, let's say, for example, two weeks from now, though, even though you get a receipt mm -hmm. notice two weeks from now, they will tell that the USCIS has received the application two weeks before, which is somewhere in July second week or so. So even though you receive a receipt notice in August first week, as long as the receipt notice shows that it's been received before your EAD expires, you are good for 540 days. So if you, okay. as a backup plan, I may want to file one more EAD just in case if something has messed up. Just look into the EAD. If everything is been properly done, if there is any chance that it's not properly done, you may want to refile the EAD application so that, you know, if any problem occurs with the first mm -hmm. one, the second one will save. Okay. 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 Got it. Got it. Thank yeah. You. And uh, one more question is, uh, you know, along with my application, I have filed uh, G1145 for the electronic notification. Can mm -hmm. that uh, notification, if I receive before Wednesday, can That's that be enough. used for I-9 notification? Yes, you can. Try. Some of the employers are willing to take it. Some of the employers are not willing to take it. If your employer is willing to take it, I don't see any problem in you working. We'll go to the next call, Randy. Okay. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's take our next caller. But uh, quick question for you, Rahul Garu, before that. Um, mm -hmm. This is from Srinivasa Asuru. Says, my son Yash is on F1 status and he received his OPT EAD. Also, mm -hmm. he's having his uh, GC EAD. As he received mm -hmm. his GC EAD, can he start working for any company? And does he need to inform his college, uh, you know, and can he use his GC EAD? Assuming that uh, Srinivas uh, Kosu's son is mm -hmm. CSPA, Child Service Act Protection, uh, is protected on it, that means that he is going to, yeah, he can use the GCEAD. I would request him to inform the uh, DSO and probably terminate himself from the civil system. Because in the civil system, though, he has to maintain the OPT. OPT has restrictions to work for a particular company that is approved by the DSO. STEM extension also you have to work for. For GCEAD though, he can work anywhere. He can work, he can flip a burger in McDonald's, he can be a Microsoft CEO. There's no restrictions at all on it. So he needs to terminate himself from the student visa if he wants to use a GCEAD. That's if, if, and if he's protected under the CSP, since he's uh, TV Asia audience, he most probably has already covered his base because he's already covered. Yeah, he can terminate himself uh, by uh, from the civil system and then just move on to GCAD. Okay, perfect. Thank you, sir. Let's take our next caller. Let's take our next caller, Randy. 
Okay, caller with number ending in 5541. 5541, we're ready for you now. Hello? Hey, hi, Raul Garu. Uh, sir, please Chupan, press sir. star 6 and 8 to unmute your line. Star 6 to unmute uh, your Raul, line. can you hear me? Raul, Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Sir, yes. yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go yeah, ahead, yeah, sir. Sorry. Yeah. So, okay, situation lo na Actually, ga na ko exempt and non exempt gurin si kunchum teliyali na situation jab So, uh, na max order September 18 thandi complete six year max mm -hmm. order. Mm -hmm. Ending emo June 20. So, perm perm ko sam wages ham actually ga. So, okay. Ma uh, visa ending ga June 20 second. So, dan mundo one week before then seventh year extension apply yes ano. Uh, mm -hmm. Apply yes ano. So, lo Okay. 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 Mir, per, me, me, me seventh year ap, apply to you step to do. I already one year. I one year. I paid that. Palm file is September 15th last year apply, sir. Okay. Me June la six years expire. Mm -hmm. in the September 18th ki six years max out. I paid Kaka pote June 22nd ah, okay. visa expire. Hai uh, I need for expire it only. I think September, my labor profile is September. Yeah, labor and extension and extension. Yeah, sir. Palm, Palm labor, labor. labor approval. Ah, Palm labor. September 15th last year, 2022. Okay, so it's been more than. Okay, my file extension, seventh year file extension. Okay, that's a good strategy. Keep going. Uh, seventh year, June, June 2nd week, apply yes, I'm a seventh year extension. Eh? June uh -huh. end law, Labor law, firm firm approval. Okay. Uh, approval pen. I one forty gorra. I put July uh, twenty hour ko apply sir. I one forty normal law. Na question mm -hmm. in the max out time of September eighteenth kai in six years. Dan tarvata gorra na di. Dan tarvata gorra okela extension approval na kya raale do I one forty approval raale do okela extension lo itu atu ayin dan kundi. Apunak exempt to non exempt situation jab tarra. Indu kante kunte mane ma friend same antona rente complete max out ka akuna fifteen days before nu bite kilte. Apunu malle apply isko n malle rawachu. Oko vela mottam complete type hote malle one year cooling period undali outside US. Miko miko kuchh simple jab tene de puru. First me range ante I one fourteen premium processing file jante. Second me range ante H one B premium processing file jante. Uh, okay. If you scenario lo, scenario lo, that your H six year was expiring in September 18, and you have filed the labor one year before, which is September 15, though, they will normally extend it for a one year period, not three years period, but one year period. And that's what most probably your lawyer did. Okay. So there are some officers okay. that may say that you must be eligible on the day you file the H1B extension, not later on. There are some officers. Now, if you do what I told you, do the premium processing of I-140, do the premium processing of H-1B, you will get all the results before September 15th. Okay? Okay. If, okay. if okay. 98, 95% of the time, you will get both the things approved. If by any chance any of them gets denied, I want you to consult a lawyer. Most probably, you would not need it. Okay? Okay, okay. And okay, well, okay, well, uh, premium process is not in my company. Rend it. So, what is the situation in Japan, sir? What is the situation in the extension? So, most probably, as I said, 98% of the time, both will be approved. If it's not, though, if it's not approved, though, so you technically were not in a H1B because, you know, uh, you can still go outside the country. You can still get the H1B and come back, even though you completed six years. Okay. Okay. So as soon as possible, out the one year cooling at claim later. Actually, you can come back. You can come back. Yeah. Exempt. You're exempt. You're exempt. Exempt together. Free to max out. No problem. Yeah. But but try to. Yeah. I know. But try to avoid the situation of going outside the country by paying extra money. Okay. If not, then do you know you take a risk of the that thing of going outside the country and come back. We'll go to the next call, Randy. You right, will be thanks, exempt. Sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. You don't, have a one year, you. you don't have a one-year cooling period. Okay, thank you.
Awesome. Thank you, sir. Let's take our next caller, Andy. And in the meantime, I have a question for you, Rahul Garu. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Andy. Okay, this is from uh, Raju M. Uh, he says, I filed 485 last year using prior employers I-140 without the 485J. My AP and EAD was approved. I have an RFE now to submit the 485J after 180 days. My case went to CRP after submitting to RFE. Can I still use my EAD? Main question is when he submitted the RFE though, was it, was it, did he submit it the 485J supplement from the company that has the I-140 approval or is it with a new company though? That's the main thing. Nitya okay. here is one thing that I want some people, some lawyers have deceived a lot of people. Okay. Let's say for example, you have a label certification with Microsoft. Okay. You have an I-140 with Microsoft. Mm -hmm. When you're filing the 485 application, you need Microsoft help to file the 485 application. You cannot go outside and get it done. Okay. So I don't know if he, if he got the help from the company or he just did it by himself though. If he did it by himself without Microsoft, even after the 180 days, if you submit an I-485J with a different company but never got the cooperation from Microsoft though, your 485 will be denied. Okay. So I don't know when he submitted the RFE, did the Microsoft submitted the I-485J, which got the labor and I-140 approval, or was it a different company? If it's right. a different company, don't use the EAD and AP. If it's a Microsoft, that the same company that got the labor and I-140 that has filed the 485J, then you're good, you can use the EAD and AP. Got it. All right, Rajivar, if you're watching this, please call us at one 882 this is why we always encourage our viewers to call us so that if there's any follow-up questions, uh, like such as in this case, it will be easier for you to give us a response right away so Rahul Garu can give you a better picture of what's, uh, what can be done and cannot be done. So please call us if you're watching the show right now, okay? All right, and on to our next caller at this point. Um, caller with number ending in 0174. 0174, we're ready for you now. Hello? Uh, please press star six and star six to unmute your line. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Hey. Hey, my name is Raj. Uh, thank you, Rahul Garu. I uh, have a question. Uh, I have an EAD uh, for both EB2 and EB3, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, initially, I applied EB3. Uh, when uh, we, I downgraded my EB2, October, uh, you know, right when we have down, yeah, October two thousand twenty, somewhere so around that my, period of time. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, I got my EAD last year, and uh, once my EB two be, became current, twenty fourteen last year. So I applied again EB two, EAD four eighty five and everything, and I got my EB two EAD as well, but I didn't get mm -hmm. my AP. Uh, mm -hmm. They said like the beneficiary ought to be received by other means mm -hmm. or EB2, e EB2 yeah. AP. So I recently mm -hmm. went to India uh, and I used mm -hmm. my EB3 AP while coming back mm -hmm. since I yes. only have AB of EB3. So mm -hmm. right now um, I'm still on, uh, so my company is still running my payroll on H1. So mm -hmm. if I want to move to a different company, can I start using my EB2 EAD? Absolutely, you can. Just because, let me tell you one thing, just because you use the EB2 EAD or EB3 EAD doesn't mean that you are arrested with those things though. You can still claim EB2 or EB3, absolutely not a problem. So can you now, since you went outside the country and came back and advanced parole on EB3, can you use the EB2 EAD if you have an EB2 EAD approval? Absolutely, you can. Okay. So next year, uh, when I do my renewal, right, uh, my EB3, since I got my EB3 before before EB2, so how do I do my extension? Like, uh, let's say let's, next year my EB3 is, end date is June and uh, EB2 end date is September. So do I need file to both extend both or just... File, file both of them, they're free, right? Of them. File both of them. They may deny one. So what's the big deal if they deny? We have one approval, that's good enough. 
Remember, they denied the EB2 advance parole saying that you already received other benefits. They may deny one. Yeah. If they deny the EB2, but oh, that's not the end of the world for you. You still have AV3 EAD. Yeah, but when my, but uh, due to, let's say my EB2 becomes current in next two, three years. If that's I'm fine. on EB3, just, continuing. Just, you're not on EB3 because you use the EAD of EB3. Okay. So I can still use my, so let's say, let if I want to use my EB2, uh, if I don't do my extension for EB3 and just do the EB2, and later on, like after one or two years, can I go ahead and extend my EB2, EB3? Not extend it. Can you In file for the four a, You can't extend it because you can't extend the one which is already expired. You can file, you can file a fresh EAD from EB3. You can. Absolutely, you can. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I have one more question on the same thing. So let's say if I, uh, I have started my using my EB2. So with the new company, but, there so is no you, you need to file wait, wait 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 there is no eb2 hmm. or eb3 ead make it clear it's just an ead okay. given to you okay there is no eb2 eb3 okay 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 then what's your question so so do do the new company has to file the ac21 right now or whenever my date becomes current uh, we are recommending people only when you get an RFE or when you go for the interview, you need to file an I-485J supplement. But there are some companies that will say, we want to file I-485J. They can do. Is it illegal to file? Absolutely not. So we don't recommend it, but it's up to you, though, what you want to do, what your company wants to do. We say only if there is an RFE or if there is an interview. We'll go to the next call, Randy. Okay. Okay, so sorry, sir. final question. So you said final if I, before. If I want to, <laughs> yes, sorry, sorry. So, and, uh, when you are EB2, right? When you are an EB2, are you okay to work on like multiple jobs? Is the second job should be IT you are not or an, anything? You are, you are not an EB2 or EB3. You are an adjustment of status. Okay? Now, yes. on adjustment of status EAD, can you work for eight companies? Yes, you can. But the second company has, let's say if I work on like multiple jobs, the second job should be IT or I can do like a Uber driving or something. Second job can be Uber driving. The one job has to be in IT. One full-time job and second job can be Uber. We'll go to, go to the next person. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for calling, Andy. Okay. Call our number ending in 4249. 4249, we're ready for you now. Hello? Please press star 6, Andy, to unmute your line. Call our number ending in 4249. Hello? Hi, Nitya. Nitya. Hello, Nitya. Sir? How are you? Uh, good, sir. How are you? Yeah, Nitya. All right. Go yeah, ahead, sir. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Rahul. Uh, yeah, my Hi. spouse is working on H4EAD. Mm -hmm. And uh, the H4EAD was uh, expired on February. Before mm -hmm. that, we applied uh, H4. Uh, it got approved. And H4EAD also we applied month of October. Mm -hmm. We have received a notice also and she is working, continuation of working in, even after H4 EAD expiration. The reason is because we have that the, the reason is she has, correct? She has a 540 day rule because H4 got extended. Okay, keep going. Yeah. So then recently she got uh, the H4 EAD also uh, Red, approval uh, notice H4. and as well as EAD card. Mm -hmm. And the valid from date it is showing is July from 2023. No problem. So do you see any issues? Absolutely. No issues. Zero issues. I want to see the receipt date. You said to me you filed in October of 2022. The receipt date yeah. on the I-797 should show that it has been filed before February of 2023. As long as that is good. Even if the EAD says it's been up, uh, it's been starting from July, she is good. Absolutely not a problem. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you so much, Rahul. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you Have so much nice for calling. Time. Okay. You too, sir. All right. Let's take our next caller. Okay. Call our number ending in four six five eight four six five eight. We're ready for you now. Hello. 
Call our number ending in 4658. We're ready for you. Hello? Okay, yes, I'm ready. Hi, sir. We can hear you, sir. Please go ahead. Sir, can you mute your TV, please? Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Okay. Hello, okay, Chapin, sir. Big question. Go, go ahead, sir. Okay, hi, 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 Rahul Rajgaru. So, so my question is like, uh, um, my wife, uh, uh, she's a doctor here. Um, she's um, sh she's done with her steps, and she was about to apply this year for September. Uh, mm -hmm. So, my question is, once she get matched, and uh, uh, either she can work on either J1 visa if if the un medical university provides it, or else she can work on H4 already. So, my question is, after completing three years. Recently, I read an article in web that uh, uh, can can she can file a on a physician national interest waiver program after completing her her uh, three years of education as a internal medicine doctor here in US. Uh, for physician national interest waiver, though, she has to work at a remote location uh, at, at a rural area. Yes. And the commitment yeah, yeah, is yeah. for five. Yeah. The commitment is yes. five years at a rural area, though. Uh, since you yes. have an I-140 approval, though, national interest waiver yes. only gets her into EB-2, though. I don't see what advantage okay. she's getting by filing a national interest waiver. And in five years, she works in a remote village. Do you see my issue? So, yeah. So, um, uh, can she, I mean, um, if... By using a, a her, I mean, I read in the web that uh, if we apply through a physician national interest waiver, uh, we will get uh, this uh, um, the, the the green card maybe in a year or so if we approach no. a lawyer. And a that is person. only no. if she is not from India. I'm assuming she's from India. If she's not from India, yes, your yes, date yes. is current anyway. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, no, she, she is from India. Okay, so yeah, what yeah. are the other options, uh, Red Digger, that you suggest that so uh, you to need get to, you uh, need for a medical? So you, you need to evaluate yeah. is J1 is a better option, H1 is a better option, or H4 EAD is a better option. Most probably H4 EAD is a better option too. But what if, what if you lose the job? Yeah, yeah. So okay. then you may want to consider J1. J1 is easy to get in, very hard mm -hmm. to get out. H1 is easy to get okay. in and easy to get out because they don't require most of the, I mean, there are medical residents, they don't require to go through the lottery system. Um, J1 is another thing that you can consider. The reason is that from the J1, there is also called H1B where she can go and remotely work in a remote area for three years. She gets the H1B without going through the lottery system. So you need to evaluate, is J1 better, H1B better, or H4 EAD better? Um, it may be worth for you and your wife to consult a lawyer because J1 has a restriction that she has to work three years in a remote area to get out of the J visa and move into H1B. H1B, she most of the university, most of the medical residents, the universities, they are not willing to file the H1B. If they are willing to file the H1B, probably H1B may be worth for you because we need to consider what if, what if you lose the job? You see my point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so one, one, one more question. Like, so what, what I'm thinking here is, uh, what is her easiest way, or else, uh, is there any, you know, uh, for a, for a medical doctors to get a green green card in a quicker way than EB2, uh, like, like same like there is, a software engineer. Right. Well, um, they, definitely they can try a EB1A. Now that's a very high okay. standard for a physicians to look okay. into if especially if she's just doing internal medicine and just doing it without doing any fellowship it's very unlikely to no, get no, no. an eb1a mm -hmm. wait wait so she finish. has a plan to do continue okay sorry yeah yeah if she has a plan to continue into probably in fellowship and other things though then she also needs to consider eb1a and she may want to build up the profile from now onwards for the EB1A application, though. She needs to write an article. Okay. She needs to present. She needs to go. Uh, she needs to be going to the meetings, speaking in the conferences. 
she needs to if she is not speaking she can go and uh, decide who is going to speak in the conference let's say there is a conference on cancer and she's not the speaker she can okay. always volunteer for the uh, for the okay. association saying that let me let me be the one of the person who will decide who is going to speak okay so all these okay. things she needs okay. to start building from now not later on okay. Okay. because eb1 requires okay. a lot of strategy to do that thing okay but first okay. she needs to okay. get Got it. step one before we fly we need to start walking and running is right yeah so step yes. one is definitely yes, yes. getting the match step two is getting into deciding whether f uh, deciding whether it's a j j1 j1 or h1b or h4 ead and then at the same time building the profile for the eb1a we'll go to the next caller okay thank you sir okay. thank, thank you so much for calling all right let's take our next caller Thank you so much. Yeah. I I did yeah thank Hi, you sir. go ahead with your question yeah. sir uh -huh. yeah I have an aged out child uh, finishing uh, his masters uh, uh, in um, May 2024 so mm -hmm. what's the, he's in medical profession he's in masters in anesthesiology so what's the best mm -hmm. time to apply for OPT or CPT. Uh, master in anesthesiology. Uh, is it in the is he a medical yes. resident or? Uh, it's a it's a kind of a certified anesthesiology assistant. He's going to be. Oh, it's going to be certified anesthesi assistant, not anesthesiologist. The reason is that anesthesiologist. I know that after you know, first you have to complete your medicine and then you go to. I think so. You no. directly yeah. go. You know, this one. How does it work out? Yeah. And I see he has to get a yeah, degree. This is a, this is a CAA certified anesthesiology assistant. Uh, uh, um, so he get uh, into um, CAA after his master's in anesthesiology. Well, uh, within uh, at the time when he is completing his master's degree, he can get an OPT yeah. though. He can get an OPT. So what's the best? Yeah, but what's the best time to apply? He's finishing his, uh, his uh, master's in May 2024. So May 2024 is the best time to apply for the OPT. So we, he can't apply before uh, May? OPT cannot be applied. OPT can be applied if I'm not mistaken. I'm not, I may not be quoting the exact dates. 30 days before graduation and 60 days after the graduation within that time limit. I may be a little bit off on the time like by about 30 days. Please check it. Uh, I can't remember it. 30 days before the graduation, 60 days after the graduation. It cannot be applied 40 days before the graduation or after 60 days of the graduation. So OPT. Now it's with regards online it says online it says uh, three months before the completion of the course. Sorry, you're right. I'm wrong. That's the reason I was telling I was a little bit, I was not 30 days up or 60 days up. Yes. Before the graduation and within a certain time after the graduation, but cannot be applied before though. So if she's graduating in May, can we apply the OPT right now, May of 2024? No, we cannot. Now that's for the OPT okay. though. CPT, she's eligible to apply for the CPT right now. She has to contact the DSO to apply for the CPT. Right now means it's a May 2024 is finishing. So I said too early, right? No, I said there is OPT and CPT. We already agreed upon the OPTs, right? right? No, we don't know whether it is a CPT or OPT. Which which one we should choose? What? At the time of graduation, at the time of graduation, you can on, you should choose OPT right now if she wants okay. to. She can choose. She can choose CPT, curricular practical training. That is part of the uh -huh. degree, though. She can do it right now if she wants to. Uh -huh. 
so Hello. it's uh, uh july so july 2023 so finishing uh, may 2024 is is not too early for cpt it's not too early for opt we already discussed 90 days before the graduation is right opt is different okay. cpt Perfect, is yeah. different so you're getting confused between okay. the both for cpt she can do it right oh. now for opt it's oh, at okay. the time of graduation Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much mm-hmm. for calling. Bye-bye. Got it. Thank you. Let's take our next caller. One other thing I would yes. suggest for this gentleman, Nitya Garu, which I forgot, is that uh, if he got the green card, though, even though she's uh, her ch- his child is about 21, he should mm-hmm. file a I-130 application, though, F2B, if he has not already file f2b is the category that they will go f2b into. okay yeah got it sir i hope he's watching right now please do that as well all right let's take our next caller caller with number ending in 4952 4952 we ready for you now hello 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 sir yeah can you hear me yes sir we can hear you yeah please can you hear me yeah. yeah yes so hello rahul garu so i have a quick question andy so i'm currently on mm-hmm. h1b and uh, mm-hmm. if I wanted to invest in a business and uh, be on a paperwork as well, like uh, when I invest in a business, and can I be a sleeping partner? You can be a sleeping partner. As long as your investment is on the paper, that's perfectly all right. Can you derive the profits from there? Absolutely. You have to pay the taxes on it. That's all it is. Absolutely you can. What you cannot be involved is in the management of the company. That's where the, the thing comes in. You just invest. Let's say there is a real estate company that's approaching you. Okay, there is an apartment complex. Why don't you put $250,000 and they're going to manage, they're going to do everything, they're going to they're going to issue a K-1B cell. Can you do that? Absolutely, yes. What if you and your friend got together and said, well, why don't we both buy together and manage an apartment complex? Absolutely not. Okay. So, and if I get an income and I'll, I'll have to file on the taxes as well, I can show it on the taxes, Absolutely. there won't be any problem, right? right? No okay. problem. Yep. Thank you so much. You, you, you yep. may get you Thank may you. get any kind of profits you can declare, you have to declare it, you have to pay taxes. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. All right. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling. All right. Let's take our next caller. Caller with number ending in 4465. 4465, we're ready for you now. Hello? Caller number ending in 4465. Uh, please press star 6 and 8 to unmute your line. Star 6 to unmute your line. Hello. Hello, Hello sir. Hey, hi. Hi, Nitya. Hi, sir. Thank you for calling. Please go ahead, sir. Hi. Your first yeah. Hi. Hi, Ramgar. So, I have one question. Hi. You have to speak oh. a little bit louder. Yeah. One of my friend is in... Yeah. Sir, do you mind speaking Hello, I'm audible now? Yeah. Now you're audible. Yeah, yeah. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> Sir, I have one question. Is, uh, one of my friend is, uh, uh, he's in India. So, mm-hmm. he got the admission and uh, he went to the visa interview for the spring 2022. And uh, due to some family, I mean, priorities, so postponed the education to the fall 2023 with the same university. They spoke to the university and uh, the university said okay to de- defer the application and uh, mm-hmm. the classes will begin uh, August uh, 20 and uh, they have valid visa and uh, they have valid up- updated I-20 also. When did he got the visa? When, when did he got the visa stamping done though? November uh, 19th, 2022. Now, he has to get the stamping again. It's more than five months after he got the stamping. Okay? He can't, He oh, should okay. not come on that visa. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yeah, he has to get the stamping again. You said he got the stamping in November of 2022. Right now, it's July of 2023. That's more than five months after he got the visa stamping. So, he should go and get the visa stamping again. We'll go to the next call, Randy. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank oh, you so oh. much for calling, Andy. All right, let's take our next caller. 
Okay, call up with number ending in eight eight five three nine. Hello. Hello. One second, sir. Hello. Yeah. Call up number ending in eight five three nine. Hello, sir. We can hear you, sir. Please go ahead. Hello, ma'am. So Hello, thanks. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, this is Shoban. I'm calling from San Jose. Have Shubin, you have to have you eaten so your I lunch? Have... <laughs> yeah. Sir, can you, you speak, speak a little, a little bit? bit? Your voice yeah. is sounding really powerful. You... Okay. <laughs> you have to speak a little bit louder. Okay. What about now? Is it okay now? Uh, is it a okay little now? bit better, but you have to speak as if that you have eaten the good lunch, okay? <laughs> okay. So, so I have one question. So mm -hmm. I recently entered, I mean, so I traveled outside country and I entered on advanced payroll after mm -hmm. coming back here i got my mm -hmm. h1b extension done mm -hmm. okay now yes. i lost my job mm -hmm. okay now okay. so my last day of my employment is october 16th okay until october 16th so i'll be on the payroll october October 16th of 2023. 16th. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. I lost my job recently and my employer is holding me October, onto October payroll 16, 2023, until October 16th. Okay, then yes, what? Yes, 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 yes. So now, what's my situation after October 16th? Will I be... Uh, Considered as an advanced payroll, uh, yeah, yeah, you that do. I understand. But uh, but as part of so, my so, immigration so wait, status, wait, wait, can wait, I be wait. on my advanced payroll? Okay, yeah, sure. Wait, if you get a job, let's say you are going to join Coca Cola company, though, will Coca Cola company okay. file a H one B? If Coca Cola company files yes. a H one B and you start working with Coca Cola on the H one B receipt notice, you will be considered to be an H one B. If Coca Cola company says, yeah, that, right. "Why do you have to waste money on immigration lawyers?" Okay, and you have already have EAD. Mm -hmm. I don't want to throw the money on immigration lawyers, and they choose to use the EAD. Then you will be considered to be an EAD. Okay. Depends on what the new company is going to choose. Will they keep on feeding the immigration lawyers oh. unnecessarily? Then you will be an H-1B. Okay. Okay. I got that. So what if if I don't get a job until November, probably, assuming that? Definitely. Then what if, let's assume um, that you don't get a huh. job. Then definitely you will be considered to be an EAD. I would definitely want you to consult an immigration lawyer. The reason is that I'm not worried about your H-1B. I don't know why people are bogged down of the H-1B. I'm more worried about your green card, though. Because for the green card, you must have a continuous job offer from a company, though. So if you can get a job offer from some company, even though you may not join them immediately, that's maybe fine. Okay. Okay. If not, self-employment uh, okay. is one of the things. These job offer without job and self-employment has some risks associated with it. But I would rather risk my green card rather than throw it in the trash okay so it's Understand. definitely yeah. getting a job is very important for you if you don't if you don't get a job now whether you get it on ead or h1b i don't care in fact i personally would like you to move on to the ead but some of the lawyers some of the companies and some of the people who want to feed immigration law that's fine why not why not get fat okay that's one thing but what okay. is more important okay. for me is to get a job. If you don't get a job, I want you to have a consultation with an immigration lawyer to look into the alternatives if you don't get an immediate job. Okay? Okay. 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 So the last question. So I only need to have an offer, right? I don't need to have the payroll running for my future you, employer. I kind of agree with you on that. I kind of agree with you on it. But the USCIS may question the genuinity of the job offer. So, okay. yeah, there is a risk involved in it, okay? 
you may require some lawyers help in arguing and telling the USCIS officer look it's only the job offer required there is a USCIS memo that says only job offer the regulation says it's only job offer you don't need it but the officer may say that why you did not join if you are not working anywhere else so it may question it now having said that having said that you're right if you are not immediately having joining some it's better to get a job offer rather than not getting anything at all yes you're right it's just okay. a job offer that is required okay okay thank you okay sir thank you thank you sir okay thank sir you yeah all right thank you let's thank you take, yeah. thank you sir let's take our next caller this guy is a smart guy <laughs> <laughs> All right. A call our number ending in six seven two zero six seven two zero. We're ready for you now. Hello. Call our number ending in six seven two zero. We're ready for you now. Hello. All right. Let's try another caller ending. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Thank you. Hello. Sir, can you put your TV on mute if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah, it's on mute. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for calling. Go ahead, sir. We can hear you. Please go ahead with your question. Hi, hi. hi. This is this is Piyush Agarwal. So I have two questions. Uh, I got mm -hmm. my GC uh, GC like four months back in EB1, and my dependent had filed with me, my wife and my daughter, and their GC has not come. Uh, mm -hmm. Yet they are file is, is still stuck with the Texas center, while I got mm -hmm. my GC like four, four months back. So what to mm -hmm. do in that case? My uh, I, I quoted my EB two. What is your prior date? Uh, June twenty seventeen. Yeah. Um. It, I would. <laughs> you have an option of filing an F two A green card though. If you want to, mm -hmm. because you're a green card holder, they mm -hmm. are not. But if your priority date is June 2017, I would not do it. And I'm not telling you what to do. I would not do it. Even though the priority date right now says 2012, I'm expecting that when it goes to, in October, I'm expecting it to be mm -hmm. anywhere between 2018 and forward than that one. Since you're 2017, you have to wait until your priority date becomes current and request the USCIS of officer to adjudicate your application. But in, if in October of 2023, if the priority date still does not move to 2017, I'm going to file an F2A application for my wife and my child, if I were you. You know what the F2A okay. is? Mm -hmm. No, I, I got it. So is it normal to uh, that dependents can like left behind right primary got the GC? I would say that about seven to ten percent of the time they are doing it because these stupid officers somehow got this file separated. They didn't understood it. That file went together, but there is nothing you can do right now, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And and can I change the job meanwhile while their AOS is pending? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, and, there, and there will not be any impact to their AOS? No, there will not be any impact for their AOS. Sure. Thanks, Aul. Thank you very much. Thank for you, your... sir. Thank you so and... much for calling, Ali. All right. Let's take our next caller. Okay. Uh, caller with number ending in 2280. 2280. We're ready for you now. Hello? Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. Yeah. Hi, sir. Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hello, Rahul, sir. Uh, thanks for uh, giving this wonderful opportunity for us. I have two questions, sir. The first one is, um, I'm a J-1 visa holder. Um, I have a valid mm -hmm. visa until June 2024. Um, mm -hmm. I have submitted my um, J-1 waiver and it's approved mm -hmm. and I have submitted my I-140 petition also under EB-1A. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. My question is, uh, am I allowed to travel India outside the U.S. and uh, and uh, is it fine if I come back with a J-1 status still uh, submitting the waiver, approved waiver and uh, submitting I-140? Is it fine if I come back? No, no, I would not recommend you travel. The reason is that J-1 is a, 
is a, not a dual intent. It's a non-immigrant. You must have a non-immigrant intent. Since you already filed an I-140 application, though, I would not travel, yeah. even though your J-1 is expiring, in J-1 visa is expiring in 2024, I would not travel. Because when you come back, they can always say, your intention has changed, you want to permanently settle in the United States. You yourself have signed a document that says that you want to settle in the United States forever. That's contradicting yeah. to the J-1, so you may have a face of problem there. I would avoid travel. That, that, does it apply same to the J2 as well, right? Um, the dependence yes. of J1? That's right. Because on the I-140 application, you already listed your spouse and your child if you have, and they should not travel on a J2 visa yes. too. Okay. Sir, one more question is like, um, I have already submitted my I-140 in January. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just uh, thinking to wait until uh, September to do the like a priority, you know, like uh, the premium, premium processing. processing. Do the uh, premium processing. Yes, do sir. the premium processing. And then you, you may want to consider one okay. other thing is called o, o visa is another thing if you want to move from J visa to O visa, okay? Okay, sir. So the O visa is like uh, there is no immigrant issues and all that, right, sir? Uh, there are immigrant intent issues there, but they're a little bit more lighter than J visas though. This is just for you to continue working after 2024. I'm just trying to give an option for you. Yes, sir. Yes, that's what, sir. I'm just, ha I had a one year, so I want to get my, my I-140, uh, I mean, submit my 485, uh, but uh, uh, I have an approved uh, oh, I-140 oh, oh, wait, in wait, NIW. Wait, wait. Um, wait. Oh, you have a previous NIW. Okay. And what's your priority date though? It's August, sir. August 22. August 22. Yeah, I, I'm not sure whether you get your priority at current, though. That's the reason I want you to have a backup plan if your company is willing to file a H-1B. Uh, most of the organizations okay. of the J-1, I, I don't know if it's a non-profit organization, the higher education, that's one thing that you can consider. If not, you should consider O-Visa. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, then. Uh, Thank you. The one last question, sir. So, so sir, for 485 J2, J2 can file separately for J2, can file separately, uh, uh, not with the J1, is that fine, sir? 485, if they are allowed. What do you mean separately? When you file a 485, you will not include your wife in it? Uh, no, sir. They Actually, they are in India. That's why, sir. They are in India. So they are, if I file 485, uh, can I file them separately, like uh, if they are not here? Ah, if they are not here. So you already filed. Yes, and sir. how long they have been outside the country, though? Uh, it's one month, sir. One month been. Just one month they left. Uh, you need to contact an immigration lawyer to bring them back onto J2. There are ways to bring them back onto J2, what they should speak, should not speak at the airport. Okay? But I want you to okay. get them back into okay. USA. Okay. The other option okay, is sir. that you can file yes. an O-1 visa, get them an O-dependent. That probably would be another better option for you. Okay? Okay, but sir, okay. I don't you, want to, <laughs> I don't want to file them separately though. The reason is that you have to wait until you get the green card and it takes three years after that. I don't like that separation though. You got it? Yes, sir. I got it. Sir. That's what, yes, sir. I got it, sir. That's what I worried. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate sure. that. Thank you. Sir. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, Rauter, one quick question before we take our next caller. This is from Venu Gopal. He says, is it safe to travel, tra safe? to travel to India with an F-1 visa during college? F-1 visa while going while he's in the college? Absolutely. Yeah. I don't see any problem. As, as long as he has not moved into any of the bad universities, uh, I don't see any problem in his travel. Um, also, I'm, I'm thinking this, this may be a question where while college is active, you know, while the semester is going, ongoing, is it okay? Ah, uh-uh. No, -uh. no, 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 no. Okay. Um, so if it's something like they're traveling for a week though that may be justifiable though but if it's traveling for more than one week uh that i don't see how they can justify because they get kicked out of the university if you if you take a one month break while the university is going on they may get kicked out okay okay so i think it's better if that person contacts a lawyer right yeah Just to but if it's in the but if it's in the in the Christmas time, if it's in the summertime, I don't see any problem. Got it. Okay. 
All right. Thank you, sir. Let's take our next caller. Caller with number ending in 4064. 4064. We're ready for you now. Hello? Caller with number ending in 4064. Hello? All right. Let's... Let's try this caller one last time. Caller with number ending in 4064. We ready for you now? Hello? All right, folks. Um, looks like we are unable to reach the caller. But um, unfortunately, as always, we keep running out of time for some reason. I know we have some questions coming in on the live chat as well and some more callers coming in. But uh, as always, <laughs> the time seems to run past while we are on this show for, uh, for for some reason. But Rahul Garu, I'd like to thank you so much, Andy, for being on the show and, and helping out our viewers uh, as well. Uh, thank you so much on behalf of TV Asia Telugu, Andy. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nitya Garu. And to all our viewers, please, please, I repeat, keep repeating this. Please call us uh, during the show. It's much easier because... A lot of times we've noticed that um, you yourself, the callers themselves realize that they have an extra question or, you know, sometimes they need to give us a tidbit of information, which is very crucial um, in order for Rahul Garu to give, uh, you know, proper advice for, for a certain scenario. Um, so please try to give us a call so we can talk to you directly and get, get all your questions answered. And on that note, I finish up this week's episode. We'll see you guys back same time, same place next week. Until then, have a great week. Yelupe Upiriga, Patu Dale Pranaya, Ajay Me Gambenga Porade Yoduriki, Vijay Manus Tafurbel. Prashtan Lo Marinta Fire, Sardan Lo Marinta Satire, Mikosam, Marinta Ramzuga. The Bucky Thinking Maripovala. Mikosam, Marinta Ramzuga. Oh my God! Ab tu deglega bachchan sab ka khel. Download Aha now. Akashuniya mai na chira lo. అప్పటి <laughs> 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 ఇలా మరెన్నో మెమరబుల్ మూమెంట్స్ తోటి 